fire has been around since this third rock from the sun that we call Earth was formed a kabillion years ago. Eventually, there were people on this planet, and those folks from time to time needed to put out those fires, because otherwise, you know, ouch. Back then, professions didn't really exist. But if they did, the fire putter outers would have probably been cavemen heroes. History has shown that as long as nature and people are fire starters, we will need our fire stoppers. A fire needs certain things to keep burning. So to fight it, you need to eliminate those elements as quickly as possible. There are really four things you can try to attack when you're trying to put out a fire. You can remove the heat, you can try and remove the oxygen, you can try and remove the chemical reaction, you can also try and remove fuel from the fire, and water helps you attack on two fronts simultaneously. While water is fire's arch enemy, in the early days of firefighting, getting enough of it to douse huge flames was a real challenge. I met up with the Henry Ford's Curator of Transportation, Matt Anderson, to look at the first innovations capable of pumping a heavy flow of good old H2O. So we have an array of firefighting vehicles. Which is the earliest? Earliest we have here, this one is from about 1836, and it is a hand-drawn, hand-powered pumper. And you could get maybe 20 people working this, 25 if you crowd in pretty tight. Even in, at the best conditions, you could probably not pump much more than 75, 100 gallons a minute. I'm not getting the sense that this could put out a big raging fire. I don't think so. You probably would use this if the fire was sufficiently advanced to, to just protect other surrounding buildings. With advancements in mechanical technology, the effectiveness of water pumping vehicles took a big leap. The next major step from hand pumps is steam-operated fire engines, and that's what we're looking at here. It's much more efficient in terms of pumping out water. You can pump, oh, five, 600 gallons a minute versus 100 gallons if you were working really fast with a hand pumper. It is just great looking. It's a beautiful machine, and you needed far fewer people to operate it. You know, we, we talked about maybe 20 people running that pump. Here, a crew of four can do it. You've got two people just tending the engine, and then two people with the hose, and you're good. Of course, most people associate fire engines with the color red. Right, here's a red fire engine here, and it was a good color for fire engines. This is sort of the final step in the basic evolution of fire engines, and now we have an actual truck chassis with an engine on board that not only powers the truck itself, but also runs the pump to pump the water. All together. All in one unit. Now you're talking closer to 750 gallons a minute. Larger versions of this truck could do 1,000 gallons a minute. Why is it commonly called a fire engine rather than a fire truck? We call them fire engines, and even our earliest machine from 1836 is a fire engine. The engine is the pump that's actually pumping out the water. When you think of a hero's vehicle, you think of the Batmobile, but you also think of a fire truck. All kids love fire engines. They go through that phase, you know, when they love to see them and think about the work that firefighters do. They're saving lives every day. Can't think of many professions that are more important than that.